Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for complete Comlex prep resources in addition to subscribing to our blog. Let's talk about amyloplia. Uh, this is basically a decrease in visual acuity that occurs in visually immature children during the first decade as a result of the lack of a clear image falling onto the retina secondary to many other causes and it's reversed more rapidly the younger the child is. Diagnosis is through a complete ophthalmological exam and it shows decreased vision and unexplained by an organic pathology. Now first you want to do whatever is needed so that a well-focused image can be produced in each retina and the good eyes then covered uh, the occlusion therapy principle to simulate proper visual development of the more severely affected eye. So that's the key thing that you want to remember for this condition. For leukocoria, um, this is any white papillary reflex. And here, there are um, several things going on. Th to make the diagnosis, obviously, direct examination of the eye by an ophthalmoscope is necessary or by a slit lamp exam. Keep in mind that um, cataracts, retinoblastoma, scarring retinopathy for prematurity, retinal detachment, and leuk leukemic ophthalmopathy are all responsible for this condition. Retinoblastoma, the most common malignant intraocular tumor in childhood, and its hereditary form is usually bilateral. Uh, the average age is diagnosis of 15 months and versus a non-hereditary unilateral uh, where the average diagnosis is uh, 25 months. That's when the average diagnosis is made. No biopsy is necessary uh, and the treatment is uh, enucleation. And so that's necessary if uh, it's spread into the orbit or nerve and it has a very bad prognosis. So for retinoblastoma, remember it's malignant intraocular tumor. There's a hereditary form. Um, which is occurs earlier and the non-hereditary form occurs a little bit later at 25 months and you may need a nucleation if the tumor has spread into the optic nerve. Uh, retinopo retinopathy of prematurity, ROP. Here um, you have cellular damage and exposure to free radicals. High oxygen concentration is a factor along with prematurity and degree of illness. Uh, patients have you know this condition because the vascular endothelial growth factors that promote neovascularization in non-vascularized retina are scarred and this leads to vision loss. You may have detached retina as well and patients need systemic serial ophthalmological exams in all high-risk newborns and the treatment modality of choice is now laser photocoagulation. Okay, so just to review retinopathy of prematurity, high oxygen concentration is a factor. You have uh, scarring and vision loss. Patients need systemic serial ophthalmological exams, and the treatment is now with laser photocoagulation therapy. Those are the key factors you want to remember. Let's also review cataracts, and this is a condition where you have um, opacity of the lens. It's mostly an isolated defect. Um, patients will have, um, you know, signs of either a association with rubella, um, most commonly in premature infants, uh, with retinopathy of prematurity. Um, there's also other metabolic disorders like galactosemia, which have been associated with cataracts. So premature infants with ROP, rubella, galactosemia, with an opacity in the lens um, is most likely going to be cataracts. Now, let's review some of the key topics such as strabismus, which is also a high yield topic. Here's um, how you make the diagnosis. You do the Hirschberg corneal light reflex test. And what is that? Well, you cover the um, cover tests are basically require the child's attention, cooperation, and good eye movement capability and relatively good vision in each eye. In the straight eyes, the light reflex is symmetric and slightly um, nasal to the center of each pupil. So in strabismus, mainly there's a misalignment of the eyes that can result in amyloplia. Um, it can be intermittent or constant and alternating or unilateral. And unilateral is more serious and the eyes, um, the undeviated eye becomes preferred resulting in amyloplia of the deviated eye. 
also there is a large and constant um, inward deviations called esotropias and exotropias which are outward deviations um, understand that there's something called pseudo strabismus which is a false appearance of strabismus and this is due to um, you know most commonly from flat broad nasal bridge and or prominent epicanthal folds with growth the nasal bridge is more prominent and displaces the epicanthal folds um, so that more sclera is seen how is it treated well the first you want to treat the amylopia um, and then surgery is recommended to align the eyes so real quick recap of strabismus it can result in amylopia um, it can be unilateral which is more serious um, there's inward deviations called esotropias and exotropias which are generally milder and um, the Hirschberg corneal reflex test is done to confirm the diagnosis and again in straight eyes the uh, light reflex is symmetric and slightly nasal to the center of the pupil whereas in strabismus it's not keep in mind the association with pseudo strabismus commonly in patients who have flat broad nasal bridge and or prominent epicanthal folds as the association there um, and the treatment is to treat the amylopia and surgery is recommended to align the eyes that was a quick overview of some of the high yield concepts in ophthalmology which you may see um, some other concepts may include hordelium and calcion a, these are mainly infections of the mebopion glands um, which is the internal hordelium it's a large abscess that points through the skin and infection of glands of zeus or mole is typically found um, whereas um, a sty which is a smaller more superficial pointing to the lid margin can also be seen these are mainly caused by staph aureus um, and what's a calcium well that's a granulomatous infiltration of a mebobian gland a firm non-tender nodule in the upper or lower lid with no signs of inflammation the treatment for hordelium is warm compress topical antibiotics and surgical drainage and for calcium um, it'll be either spontaneously regressing or it may need to be incised well that was a quick overview of the high yield topics for the complex board exam good luck in your preparation